Exposed, written by Leon Hamilton and narrated by Beatles for Nyes and special guest star Duchess of Darkness. It's hard to explain what happened. I didn't catch on at first because it took years for whatever that was to start. The apartment complex we used to live in sets between two inner city bayous in Texas. My wife Shauna and I lived there for close to five years. The neighbors were loud and rude, but on a good day, I could sit out on my patio and read. The view from my front door wasn't much, but I could see out into the bayou and watch the raccoons run. As apartments go, it wasn't really that bad. About a year ago, I started seeing the change in the raccoons. Now normally, I would see one or two of them around the dumpster. But one night, when I was walking to meet Shauna, things changed. As I was passing the dumpster, I noticed six or seven large raccoons going through the trash. On any other night, they would scatter way before you could get close, but not that night. Two of them stood on their hind legs watching me walk by. When I made it to my wife's car, I glanced back to see another one on the fence coming towards us. I stopped and it stopped and stared at me. When I turned around, I swear it was looking dead into my eyes and not flinching. Oh, but it gets worse. More of them were climbing out of the dumpster. They didn't budge until Shauna got out to her car and hit the alarm. She hadn't been paying attention, so when she saw all of them scrambling over the fence, she almost freaked out. Two nights later, I was taking out the trash. The moment I came around the corner, I saw a raccoon standing on the lid of the dumpster. When I got a little closer, it hopped down, but didn't run. The damn thing just stood there looking at me. I remember thinking the trash smelled worse than usual while I was tossing in the bag. I got a good look at it. I could see its fur was falling out in clumps and it was twitching. Backing up slowly, my first thought was rabies. Just fucking great. But it wasn't being aggressive at all. I kept my eyes locked on the thing and till I felt comfortable enough to turn and walk away. Over the next few days, the raccoons vanished completely. But that same bad odor was lingering and starting to spread across the complex. I started noticing there was always pools of water in certain areas. And as the days went on, I started seeing wastewater spilling out of the drainage ports under the sidewalks. It wasn't just water either. There would be toilet paper and lumps of human feces on the ground, sometimes for days. Along with the raccoons, there used to be a large population of cats that roamed the property. I never saw them act strange, but eventually they all died. After people's pets started getting sick all over the complex, before anyone knew what was going on, nearly every animal was gone. It took kids getting sick and adults having skin problems for people to notice. Residents started complaining, if not directly to the staff, to one another in day-to-day -day conversations. Things went on like this for a while, 
Then Mrs. Kane died. I really don't know much about the woman. I'd seen her a few times and she seemed healthy enough, I guess. In any case, when the apartment staff went to clean the apartment, they had to air it out. That same rotten stink from the dumpster rolled out of that apartment, so thick that my wife and I could smell it around the corner. Thinking back, we probably should have taken it as a warning when we saw the people in the white hazmat suits cleaning out her apartment. One week later, another of our neighbors died. Once again, that same rotten smell. This time, it was so strong they had to strip the sheetrock and redo the entire apartment. One by one, week after week, paramedics were pulling bodies from their homes and it was the same every time. At that point, my wife and I wanted to move out, but couldn't afford to do it. We both were starting to have these horrible dry patches on our skin. We tried all kinds of lotions and different soaps, but it just kept getting worse. Then came stomach problems and headaches late night sweats and nightmares seemed to never end as things progressed people started getting hostile arguments and fights could be heard every night until we started killing each other it didn't happen as fast as it sounds but in reality it happened gradually first there was a young lady who stabbed her boyfriend. From what I heard, that was an argument over a phone. She didn't kill him, but there was a lot of blood, and they both went to jail over it. Next, some asshole was beating up his girlfriend. The fight spilled out into the parking lot, and when she tried to leave, I actually saw the end of this one. She was in the car sitting behind the wheel while the guy was keeping her from closing the door. When he reached in and tried to pull her out, she pulled a gun and shot him in the face, then slammed her door and sped off. She died in a wreck 30 minutes later, driving the wrong way on the freeway. Two nights later, my wife and I were coming home from grabbing a pizza. When we pulled up, the police were everywhere. Once we're finally able to park, we saw our upstairs neighbor, Mike, covered in blood, being dragged away in cuffs. I found out later from Dwight, he lives next door, that Mike had been beaten by his brother to death over a beer. He was drinking it when the police arrived. On the top of all of this, we got hit by a car. <laughs> God, I'm just so upset. We got hit by a hurricane that caused a flood and kept us all stranded with no electricity and no way out for two weeks. There were three murders in that time. When it was all said and done, most of the complex had been flooded. When it drained out, we got mold, and things went fucking nuts. That brings us to a few weeks ago. 2 a.m. Sunday morning. I just stepped out of my front door to light a blunt when I see three men in white hazmat suits. One was scooping dirt into a clear container while the other was plucking leaves from the bushes. The third was walking back and forward, waving a black wand in the air, staring at a small screen in his other hand. When they noticed me standing there, the man with the wand came over 
to the stairs and looked up at me. You need to go back to your home, sir. Return to inside now. Still smoking my blunt, I hesitated for a second. And when I did, he pulled a gun. I said, go back inside now. He started up the stairs, putting up both of my hands, I stepped back inside and closed the door. I could hear him outside talking to someone for a second before they moved on. Rushing to the bedroom, I woke up Shauna. You need to get up now. Something's going on. Get dressed. Still half asleep, she gave me an angry look and sat up. What? No, leave me alone. What are you doing? Scrambling to get myself dressed, I told her what happened, and she didn't believe me. Stop playing and turn off the lights. Putting on my shoes, I snatched the blanket off her. I'm not playing. Get up. We have to get out of here. Realizing I was serious, Shauna got out of bed and went to the window. What are they doing? She paused for a second and rubbed her eyes. Oh my God, they're putting boots on all the cars. What is this? I rushed over to take a look. She was right. The alarm triggered on a gray Mustang and the owner came out yelling. The guys in the white suits ordered the man back inside, but he wasn't having it. He yelled and cursed until they pulled out guns. We expected him just to go away, but instead, he tried to attack them, and they shot him. Holy shit, they just killed that man. Shauna nervously left the window and rushed to grab her phone from the stand. I stayed put, eyes glued on the action outside of my window. One of the men in white stepped over to the body and sprayed it with something he'd pulled from his waist. Thick white foam started covering the corpse after a few seconds. Then, when he was done, he pulled out a small camera and took a picture. I was so shocked by what I was saying, I, I couldn't hear Shauna calling my name. Leo, are you listening to me? I said I don't have a signal. Check your phone. Snapping out of it, I checked, and it was the same on my end. Grabbing the remote off the bed, I turned on the television. The emergency broadcast alert was on every channel, playing nonstop. We were both trying to stay calm and process what we were seeing, but before either of us said a word, the sound of gunshots ripped through the room, followed by screams of people running for their lives. Shauna raced to the main room to get a look out of the front, peeping out of the window, I heard her gasp. When, when I walked in, she was sitting on the floor with her back to the bar. She looked up at me with the saddest expression I'd ever seen. They killed that girl and her mother. They were running away. They didn't have to do that. Why would they do that? I didn't have an answer. There was nothing I could say to make this right. Shaking my head, I handed her a bottle of water off the bar and sat down next to her on the floor. We both stayed there in silence, listening to the helicopters circling overhead. When the noise finally died down, I convinced her we needed to rest, and eventually we went to bed. I don't think either of us slept. Probably a good thing we didn't, though. 
At 6 a.m., we started hearing the helicopters again. We were both hovering and, and just waiting to see what would happen. And we heard the helicopters come back and they stopped directly over our building. When we looked out of the window, we realized there were two of them carrying something. They were tenting the entire complex. Oh my God, panic set in. We both rushed to the front door, threw it open and stepped out only to be met by men in white suits carrying assault rifles. They ordered us to stay inside until they were done. What choice did we have? When, when they were finished, we couldn't see the sky anymore. Just an eerie yellow glow and a, and a low ringing sound that never went away. Shauna and I walked out looking up at the roof of the tent it seemed solid it didn't move with the breeze or shake in the slightest glancing over at, at my view of the bayou all I saw was the yellow wall stretching up high above the trees we slowly went downstairs nervously looking around until we got out to the driveway that runs through the center of the complex. Seven bodies were covered in white foam and were scattered around on the ground. In the quiet, I could hear a sizzling sound coming from the bodies. The longer we stood there, that sizzling was accompanied by low crackling and a strong chemical odor that took my breath away when I got too close. Gradually, as we walked around, more people started coming out of their apartments. Before long, almost everyone was outside walking around with that same lost expression I'm sure my wife and I had it for, for the first few minutes as well. As the crowd grew and became restless, people started panicking. A small group tried to lift the edge of the tent off the ground so someone could crawl under. At first, there were five of them. They strained and grunted and trying as hard as they could but they just couldn't quite lift it. They, they tried and tried. They got it to bulge more than, and more and more joined in. I, I'm just so shocked at what I'm saying. People trying to escape. Soon, there were 10 of them doing everything they could to get it off of the ground. The instant they got it to budge an inch, we heard something cut through the air. Whatever it was passed by so fast I couldn't see it. Then all 10 men hit the ground screaming. There was blood everywhere. All of them lost both hands and both feet just above the ankle. People did the best that they could for them, but eventually, most of them died. Over the next few days, people tried all kinds of ways to get out. Nothing worked. After two weeks, most people were out of food. My wife and I had been stocking up on canned goods and bottled water since the beginning of this of, of the hurricane season, but even we were having to ration it out. 
the lights and water were still on for some reason. No one could turn off their air conditioners. As a matter of fact, no matter what you set it on, the AC just wouldn't stop. Temperatures would drop into the 50s or lower. It would get so cold that we could see our own breath in the air. The only choice was to go outside to warm up. Stepping out the front door was surreal. We couldn't tell if, if, if it was day or night. Just a constant yellow glow no matter what time the clock said. Standing out on the patio one night, Shauna turned to me and asked me if I thought we were going to die here. I hadn't really thought about it before that moment. I smiled and shook my head before telling her no. But I couldn't help but wonder. Later that night we were trying to sleep when the screaming started. We rushed outside to see a young woman slowly walking down the sidewalk yelling, wake up, wake up at the top of her lungs. Before long, she had an audience. Turning to look at all of us in our doorways or on our porches, she screamed out, we're all going to die. Then she pulled a gun from under her shirt, stuck it into her mouth and blew her brains out right there in front of everyone. No one said a word for what felt like a long, long time. Until a kid named Tim walked over to the body and picked up the gun. He looked around at all of us with tears in his eyes, then smiled and said, She's right. I heard someone else scream, No! Then he shot himself in the head. His mother rushed over to him crying, dropping to her knees next to his body. People started to crowd around trying to help her. In the chaos, someone else grabbed the gun, another gunshot, another body. We watched as it moved through the crowd until the gun was empty. Holy shit, holy shit, what just happened? Shauna was frantic, but I was hypnotized by the shock of it all. I stood there watching. One after the other, people were picking up an empty gun trying to kill themselves. When it didn't work, they dropped the gun and walked away calmly, like nothing happened. What the fuck is this? I muttered under my breath stepping backwards as, as, as if I could put distance between me and what was happening. I looked over at Shauna who was standing there with her hand clamped over her mouth with tears rolling down her cheeks, calmly placing my hand on her shoulder. I told her we would go inside. Time moved slowly after that. We didn't have much to say. I think we were both in shock. It wasn't till Dwight knocked on the door that we snapped out of it. Hey guys, I was wondering if you could maybe spare some food. We're, we're doing pretty bad over here and could really use a hand. Dwight lives with his grandmother next door. She's bedridden and he takes care of her. We gave him a couple of cans of soup and some instant noodles, but that was all that we could really spare. Not 10 minutes later, there was another knock on the door. It was the couple from down the sidewalk. Hi, my name is Oscar. This is Justice. We were wondering if you could spare another can of soup Looking at, looking at, at them, then around at the others watching, I shook my head. Sorry, man. 
we can't really spare anything else. Why don't you ask around? I'm pretty sure a few of those people can help you guys out. An angry look overtook Oscar's face and he snapped. We know you have food in there. We don't need much. Just something for the night. Give us some fucking food now. At this point, he was yelling and stepping towards me. I reacted by pushing him back and telling him to leave. Then he swung at me. I barely managed to dodge his punch and shove him back again before Justice grabbed a small barbecue pit. <sighs> Dwight kept on his front porch and bashed me with it. The next thing I knew, Shauna came rushing out of our apartment carrying the machete I kept under the bed. Oscar and Justice bolted down the stairs and ran off. I looked at Shauna for a second and smiled. Let's get back inside. I'm surprised you didn't grab the gun. I didn't want to touch it after what happened. Besides, I just wanted to scare them off and not kill them. Later on that night, we could hear Dwight yelling at his mother through the walls. When I went over to check on them, the door was slightly open. Hey, Dwight, you okay in there, buddy? There was no response. Slowly pushing the door completely open, I called out again. Hey, Dwight, it's me, Leo. Is everything all right in there? Nothing. I could hear a wet packing sound coming from inside, but I couldn't see anything. I called out one last time and he stepped out into the hall. He was dripping with blood and smiling like a madman. Yeah, everything is just fine now. How can I help you, neighbor? Dwight took a couple of steps in my direction and stopped. When he passed the mirror hanging in his hallway, Looking at his reflection, he ran his fingers through his hair, then chuckled before turning back to face me. I have to thank you for that food. It was delicious. Mama couldn't eat much. She's not feeling well right now. I stepped back, inching towards my own door as he casually strolled over. Uh, no problem. Any time. You have a good night. As I got to my door, he stepped out into the patio with a wild smile stretching across his bloody face. He tilted his head back and took in a deep breath, then slowly looked at me. Why are you looking at me like that? Is something wrong? Are you okay? Nodding and stepping inside, I told him everything was all right, then closed the door. Shauna was standing in the living room, waiting for me. What happened? I stood there for a second, speechless. Then I told her I thought, Dwight had just killed his grandmother. She instantly looked sick and took a seat on the couch. Are you sure? I mean, he doesn't seem like the type to do something like that. I just... She stopped in mid-sentence, glancing over my left shoulder. Lowering her voice, she whispered, There's someone at the window. And slowly motioned for me to turn around. Nervously shifting my attention to the window, I saw a silhouette against the curtain. Making my way over, I looked out to see Dwight was standing there, staring at the window. He didn't seem to notice me peeking out at him, 
I watched him, staring at his own reflection, making faces at himself and occasionally giggling under his breath. Gunfire somewhere deeper in the complex snapped him out of his daze. He smiled at himself one last time, then took off down the stairs. When I turned to tell Shauna he was gone, she came walking out of our bedroom with the gun. Is he still out there? I shook my head and and she let out a sigh of relief. We didn't sleep that night. Around seven in the morning, I went to the kitchen, put on a pot of coffee. I just poured the second bottle of water in when I started hearing a scratching sound coming from the front door. Pausing to listen, I waited till I heard it again. Then grabbing the hammer out of the junk drawer, I went to the door and flung it open. Lying at my front door was a little girl. I, I didn't recognize her. Her skin was dried and cracked to the point she was bleeding. The pained expression on her face looked as if she wanted to cry but couldn't. When I tried to help her up, chunks of dead skin started to fall off, causing her to bleed. As the little girl screamed, Shauna came rushing over to see what was going on. Jesus, what happened to her? Where'd she come from? I don't know. She was scratching at the door. I found her like this. Help me get her up. We tried every way we could think of to get her off the ground without hurting her. But no matter what we did, her situation just got worse. After a few attempts, the girl was bleeding so badly, we were forced to give up. We used blankets and pillows to make her as comfortable as possible. But in the end, it didn't matter. She managed to tell us her name was Mary before her eyes glassed over and she slipped away. Shauna and I sat there staring at her lifeless body, not knowing what to say or do. We couldn't just leave her lying there. The smell from the other bodies was bad enough without having one directly in front of our door. We decided to wrap her up in blankets and take her down to the playground near the center of the complex. It was the only place we could think of and in a twisted sort of way, it seemed like the best place for a child to be. As we carried her through the apartments, we started hearing someone calling her name. After a few minutes, a woman came walking down the sidewalk towards us. The closer she got, I noticed her skin was cracked and gray, just like Mary's. She called out again, and we waved her over. Have you seen my little girl? Her name is Mary. She's seven. I can't find her anywhere. I looked at Shauna, who had tears in her eyes as she looked down at the purple and white blanket we were carrying. She shook her head as if she couldn't bring herself to say the words, so I did. I'm sorry, ma'am. We found her on our doorstep. There was nothing we could do. The woman watched us as we laid her daughter's body on the ground in front of her. She didn't say a word for the first few seconds, then burst into tears and started screaming at us. What did you do? You killed my Mary. I know you did it. God damn you. She lunged forward, attacking 
us both screaming out. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. We both did our best not to hurt her, but she wouldn't let up. She just kept coming. Grabbing her by the arms, I tried to stop her, but her skin peeled away, allowing her to slip out of my grip. She lashed out at Shauna as she backpedaled away and tripped over an unleveled section of sidewalk. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. She screamed, bearing down on Shauna. I didn't have a choice. I punched her in the back of the head as hard as I could. And when I connected, instead of smacking against her skull, my fist sunk in. There was a wet pop and a thick black blood oozed down my arm. She made a gurgling sound, then dropped, causing me to fall with her. There was a rancid stink that came out of the wound while I tried, while I tried to pull my hand free. Once, Shauna, was back on her feet, she helped me out. When I finally was able to free my hand, it was covered in a pinkish gray clumps that looked a little like scrambled eggs. I couldn't take it. I puked my fucking guts out all over the ground. What the fuck just happened? Jesus Christ, my hand went through her fucking head. I, I, I didn't mean it. I, was, I, I wasn't trying to kill her. I was just trying to stop her. Caught up in the moment, neither of us realized people were gathering around. I could hear them murmuring to each other, pointing at my wife and I. Before I knew it, someone threw a bottle at us and the crowd went fucking nuts. They chased us all the way back to our apartment. Once we were inside, they threw things and shattered the windows. A few seconds later, they were pounding on the door. We both raced to the bedroom. Shauna was ahead of me and got her hands on the pistol just as the front door came crashing in. She fired into the crowd while I grabbed the machete off the bed, turned and rushed back to the front door room. I back, I rushed back into the front room, swinging at anything moving. It was a bloodbath. After the first four dropped, they stopped coming in, but they started shooting back. The firefight didn't last long. Most of them didn't have weapons at all. The few that did only fired a couple of shots before running away. And then it was over. There's no way to verbally express the next couple of minutes. We both stood there breathing heavily and in the silence. I wanted to laugh and I wanted to cry. I wanted to throw up, but I couldn't move. Shauna, Shauna walking over and hugging me, snapping me out of it. She asked me if I was okay, and I know it seems like the logical thing to do, but there was something in those words that brought me back to life. I took a deep breath and nearly dropped to my knees. The reality of what just happened hit me, and I broke. I sat on the floor, in blood, looking at the four dead bodies. Staring at all, all of them, I started to notice something. They all had dried out patches of skin on their bodies. They weren't as bad as Mary and her mother, but 
They were noticeable. When I told Shauna about it, she instantly started talking about the dry patches we were seeing on our cells. I guess it's one of those things that I hadn't put much thought into until she brought it up. But they looked a lot like what we had only much worse. It took a while for me to come completely back to reality. But when I did, we were faced with the cleanup. It was horrible. The smells and the sounds alone left me with memories I'll never get over. And when it was finally done, we were both exhausted. Shauna looked at me and laughed. <laughs> I never want to do that again. I looked at her and asked her, Which part? She smiled and said, Any of it. I never want to ever have to do any of this shit ever again in my life. We talked for a while after that. For a few minutes, we forgot about the world outside our door and, and the blood stains on the carpet. We got lost in each other's company, like nothing had ever changed and it felt great. Unfortunately, it didn't last. Dwight was back. He stood outside, staring through the shattered window, smiling at us, not saying a word. His skin was dried out and cracked, causing blood to trickle down his forehead. He smiled, and sections of his cheeks flaked away, leaving open wounds. Looking around at all the damage and taking a deep, wheezing breath, he chuckled. <laughs> you guys all right? What the hell happened? We both sat there speechless. He was falling apart right in front of our eyes, but he was acting as if he were okay. We watched him casually stretch his head and pull back a fist full of hair and and part of his scalp. Tossing it on the ground, he chuckled, then glanced at both of us and collapsed. He didn't move after that. Shauna and I didn't budge. I think it was... I think it was all just too much. We both let out a sigh of relief and started laughing. Getting up off the floor, I stepped outside to check on Dwight. Once I was sure he was dead, I stood there for a second looking around. The sound of something moving through the dead leaves caught my attention. I stood completely still, waiting to see where it was coming from, and after a few seconds, I saw it. A full-grown healthy raccoon. It was quite possibly the most wonderful thing I'd ever seen in my life. Not because it was a beautiful little forest creature. Hell no, I hate those little bastards. But it meant there had to be a safe way out. I watched that raccoon for two days. It took the same path both days. The third day we followed the path. It led us to a section of the apartments in the rear, left corner of the complex. The fence was old and falling apart, and just on the other side of it was a ditch, lined with rocks and old tires people had been throwing away for years and years. There was a small section of the tent that wasn't touching the ground. The tires and rocks created a gap big enough for the raccoon to get in and out with ease. We weren't going to be able to clear a path in 
One night, there was too much work to do. We did what we could the first night without being noticed and got out of there. The next night, we did the same. It took us a few days to get it all done, but after a week, we were ready. Shauna stepped outside from some air that morning and noticed people walking around. At first, it was just one or two, but after a few minutes, there was at least eight of them aimlessly walking in the driveway. Slowly, she started to realize they were all falling apart. Some of them looked like their flesh was literally melting off their bones. They wailed and groaned in pain, some laughing, others crying. One old woman sat on the ground, pulling out her teeth one by one, uh, humming a happy little tune while she did it. Shauna stepped back in and called me to come see what was happening. When I got there, I couldn't believe my eyes. What the fuck is this? I, I just didn't understand why we, why we were not like them. We don't look like them. We don't act like them. There's nothing wrong with us. How did we not get sick? Shauna shook her head and asked me if it mattered. I guess in the end it didn't. All that mattered was that we were getting out of there and this nightmare would be behind us. The day passed slowly, just like it always did. When those, when the noises finally stopped and we thought it was safe, we headed for the hole. It took two and a half hours to finish it. <laughs> it, and it couldn't, couldn't have happened a second sooner. Someone spotted us and suddenly people were racing towards us, seeing what we what we had done. Shauna went through first, and I was right behind her. We crawled through the mud and debris, feeling our way through the dark. I could hear the tunnel closing on us as we moved as fast as we could. People were screaming behind us, pushing against my legs and feet, trying to make this go faster, but as the tunnel... <laughs> oh, God... But as the tunnel started to give, I knew all of us wouldn't make it. I could hear Shauna ahead of me screaming as she squirmed her way out of the opening. Picking up my pace, I lurched forward and spotted her hand grabbing for me. Reaching out to take hold, she pulled with all her might and I pushed with everything I had left. There was a brief second of absolute darkness, then an explosion of light when I burst through on the outside of the tunnel, and then it collapsed, killing everyone unluckily enough to have been inside. Breathing fresh air for the first time in weeks felt amazing. I had to lay there for a second taking it in. Shauna was already on her feet looking around. She turned to me and smiled just before we heard a voice yell out, Freeze! Right there! Of course we didn't listen. We both darted out, out of there as fast as we could. Running along the tracks, we eventually made it to the, to the bayou. With them hot on our trail, once we made it down the incline, we ran until we were out of breath and then hid in the drainage pipe for the rest, for the rest of the night. <sighs> Hearts pumping, we sat in silence listening for the men in the white suits. Once we rested enough, we waited a little longer 
I started looking around, realizing where we were. Near our apartments, there was a park we used to go to for walks. A long path right there was next to the drainage ditch. Oh, everything came together there, connected to the bayou. All we had to do was follow the pipe and we would come out in the park. The only problem was convincing Shauna to go along. I convinced her. If we followed the tunnel, we could make it to the park. From there, we can get to the store and with any luck, maybe get a ride from Pete if he works tonight. Before she could respond, we started hearing voices headed our way. The choice was made for us. The walk to the park was a lot longer than it looked from the outside. Moving through pitch black, staying close together, we felt our way to the other end. We waited there for a few minutes until we thought it was safe, then climbed the ladder out and things pretty much went according to plan from there. Thanks to Pete, we were able to get out of the city. He set us up at his uncle's cabin, which is where we are now. According to the news, there was a fire that burnt the apartment complex to the ground. They used actors pretending to be heartbroken residents. Hell, we saw two people pretending to be us, but that's not even the craziest part. They actually looked a lot like us, nearly identical. They even had a fake Dwight. If I didn't know better, I would have thought it was him. In any case, my wife and I have a theory the only thing that separated us from the rest of our neighbors was the water. We never drank it. The only time we were exposed to it was in the shower or when we washed our hands. That explained why the raccoons and cats got sick from eating out of the dumpster and why we had those dry patches on our skin. We never figured out what the AC thing was. Well, for whatever reason, they were trying to keep us as cold as possible. I'm not sure how many people died in that place. If you believe the news, everyone made it out alive. We still both have nightmares nearly every night. The stomach aches are getting better and the constant headaches are gone. But from time to time, I catch a whiff of that scent and it makes me nervous. Shauna says she keeps seeing things and, and I've caught her once or twice talking to herself in the mirror. I'm sure we'll, we'll never be the same, but were alive. I wish I could tell you why this happened, but honestly, I don't know. What I can say is, this is happening in a lot of places. I see homes and apartments, complexes, buildings, burning on the news all the time now. I'm pretty sure this will be the last time I reach out. We've been seeing hikers watching the cabin. So we're packing up and we'll be leaving soon. My wife and I felt like we should have tried to warn you all because every little bit helps. If we can save even one of you by telling you what to look for, then it was worth this risk. 
if people around you start changing, acting strange, or getting violent, distance yourself. If the animals start dying in your area, get prepared. And if you ever see the men in white, run. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs>